Welcome to the Indiana Farmer. So I'm going over to an old friend's house today. A good friend of mine, his name is Lucas. Uh, he made a mobile chicken coop, and I thought it'd be interesting to go check it out. Um, sounds like a pretty cool idea. So I'm about ready to head over there, and I'll see you there. Well, I am here today with Jennifer and Lucas and uh, we are looking at their mobile chicken coop. And uh, so, guys, uh, how did this all start? Where, uh, why did you decide to do this? And give me all the background of what's going on here. Well, I found a grant online uh, through a group called FACTS, F-A-C-T, and they are all about raising food animals humanely. And so they give people grants to pasture raise their animals. Um, so one of the ideas we had was if we had a chicken coop on wheels, we could rotate the birds to different parts of the pasture, which keeps your pasture healthier and your birds healthier. Um, so that's kind of where the idea came from um, and we wrote the grant and we got the money and it ended up of course being not nearly enough but <laughs> but it got us started so you know so how many birds you got in there I think we're around 75 Wow yeah wow. yeah it's hard to count them because they don't stand still for yep. it but the handyman behind this tell me how you did it well it's uh, the base is just an old uh, hay wagon Okay. Essentially just built a deck on top of it and it's uh, pretty much a pole barn construction. It's just a little pole barn sitting on top of a hay wagon. But you got even more on here because you installed a solar panel? Oh yeah, we've got so we've got a solar panel for our automatic door so we don't have to do, do anything. It's got a photo sensor on it so it opens and closes all on its own. Show me the new house oh, here. Show me all the luxuries. Come into our crib. <laughs> Ooh, this is nice. So, I mean, it's not the biggest thing, but I'm over six foot tall, so I can stand up in here. So we got, the, there's an egg there. I can't believe it made it all the way out here okay. without falling. <laughs> so yeah, the doors on the sides flop down. Uh, and we do need to still put dividers in sure. because yeah. they don't like a big space. Well, it looks like, like your birds are uh, slightly, uh, you got a couple of them that are younger anyway, so yeah. are they yeah. laying yet? No, no, not yet, yeah. not yet. So you got and party then, lights up here? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's always a party. It's always ladies. a party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, this is really cool. This is really cool. So, did you, uh, Lucas, did you uh, get this plan off of anything or did nope. you just straight out of your mind? Straight out of my mind. Oh, this is pretty it's, neat. Uh, I've been in the trades since I graduated college. Come so, on, girl. There you go. Permanently fixed after it's open. Here they come. All the luscious ladies. We're rocking their world because they've never seen this part of the yeah. farm before. <laughs> there they go. So Lucas, explain to me uh, the solar door here. So what we got is uh, up on top we have a little solar panel. It okay. comes down and charges a battery here. Uh, and then we have a little light diode. That's a light sensor. So. When it's dark, it closes itself. When it, the sun starts coming up, it senses it, opens the doors for them. Uh, do they go in without a light in the inside? Yes. Yeah, really? they sure do. Uh, well, we'll test, we'll test it from, this is the first time we've moved it, so that'll be a test. Yeah. yeah, it was rough transitioning them to the new coop because we actually had to go wait for them to kind of go to sleep um, after dark and then move all 75 of them by hand the first night in there. And then the next morning, uh, you know, of course they all came out, but then the next night they, they didn't put themselves back. So it was, it took about a week of actually hand collecting them and putting them in for them to learn the routine. They are a creature of habit. Aren't they, they are a creature of habit. Yeah. Why did you guys, why'd you guys decide to put a coop on wheels? Coop de, coop de will. Well, the reason for doing it on wheels, like I said, is pasture rotation, right? Okay. If you can keep your pasture healthy, um, you have to seed less often, you will get fewer weeds, and ob obviously moving it around means that there's more fresh bugs and, and good materials for the birds to eat, and that's going to give you a healthier egg. Now, are these considered organic so, eggs, or like, how does that work? Interestingly, we <laughs> cannot get any of our animals certified organic because of these fence posts which are treated wood and a bird 
might rub up against it. So they're not considered certified organic. They are considered pasture raised. Okay. So pasture raised means from sunup to sundown, these birds have access to pasture and they're outside eating bugs and grass and alfalfa and whatever other good natural products they want. Um, this is very different than cage-free. Cage-free birds could be kept in a barn 24-7, just not in cages. And it's also different than free range, which is where they're confined to a pen. And if you have ever seen an area, um, you know, like a chicken run, you know that it very quickly lacks any kind of vegetation because they scratch it up and it just ends up being dirt. And so cage free, or I'm sorry, um, free range is, a, is better than cage free because at least the birds get access to the outdoors, but it's not anywhere near the quality of a pasture raised bird where you're getting all of the benefits in your meat or your eggs from the birds eating, you know, things nature intended. Gotcha. I didn't know the difference. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Really interesting. Yeah. And if you go to a grocery store, 99% of the time you can't find any cartons that say pasture raised. I have found them one time in one grocery store when I lived in Chicago and they were six dollars a dozen. Right. We lose a lot of birds to predators and there's nothing you could do when you're out here because they come from the sky, they come from the trees, sure. they come from the forest preserve back there and we lose about 50% of our layers every year and so we have to replace those birds and then it takes six months for them to start laying of us feeding them where we're not getting any eggs to sell and so it's really not about making money i wish i wish we made money on it but we kind of break even right now right and i think a lot of people need to understand two things the reason why they are paying more for this type of thing yes and secondly what it actually is yes oh yeah because people don't know they see free range when people hear the word free range what you're videoing here is what they think think they're right. getting right. and it's not right. have you noticed any feed reduction due to uh this program this is the farmer in me asking now you know i i, I always like to know about feed reduction and right so i don't i don't know if i can answer that very well because i've only raised birds this way okay but what i can tell you is with our 75 birds we are going through about two 50 pound bags of feed a week i think okay so 100 pounds a week yeah so that and and, and that comes out to about you know 20 to 30 bucks i think um in, in the cost of food i just looked up the numbers from purdue and i noticed that uh, chickens uh, need 1.5 pounds of feed a week according to their estimation so those two definitely are using less feed a week uh, than recommended, so they might be onto something. That's pretty interesting um, that they can supplement uh, that much feed through uh, movement of pasture. Um, I guess maybe it needs to be looked into. But thank you everybody for watching. I'm the Indiana Farmer. We'll talk to you soon.